Today I am interviewing Janet Culpert, who is a mentor for passionate small business owners looking to expand their business and create a successful plan for growth and sustainability. Her lifelong experience in the business industry and entrepreneurship allows her to educate and lead her clients to developing impeccable skills in networking and forming long-lasting connections. She is passionate about teaching business staff how to confidently promote the business they are in and create a circle of partners and opportunities with professionalism and integrity. Janet believes in the power of networking with confidence and can be found transforming business relations through workshops and private mentorship. So, hi Janet, how are you today? I'm good, thanks Mel. Yourself? After a great weekend, beautiful weather today. It's beautiful looking out at the sunshine, so wonderful. Wonderful yes. start to the week is what I think. When I see sunshine, that means I'm going to have a good day. Yes, me too, me too. So, Janet, let me ask you, um, just tell us a little bit about Janet Culpert and um, tell, us, tell us what you do, Janet, and your why. Okay, well, my why is I like to help others. I'm always thinking of other people, and I think that comes about because I'm a wife, I'm a mum, I'm now a nana, I'm a sister, I'm an auntie. I just love the whole family nurturing thing. I've looked after four kids, part of a blended family, so that's a different compromise in itself with different children that are stepchildren and an elderly parents at the same time. So I always like helping others, but for me, I needed some time for me and that was to concentrate on business. Yeah, That's how I came about that initially. So I knew that I could be a good mother and I could be a good sister and whatever and help other people that way in a nurturing role. I yeah. wanted to bring it into my business role so I just didn't feel like I was just going to work. Yeah. So my why is to help others and to inspire others that whatever your lifestyle is, you can have something that you feel is just you. And to me, my uniqueness is I want to inspire others to succeed in what they're good at and use networking for that. I'm not good, I'm not like a life coach or a mentor or anything that way. I purely concentrate on what I'm good at, which is meeting other business owners, gaining referrals for my business and showing others how to do that for them. So I want to inspire others that networking, how it can work for them as an individual. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of people do say it doesn't work, don't they? I mean, what, yeah, what they do. do. Think, what do you they think do. they're doing wrong? They're trying to be like other people. They're not being themselves. Mm -hmm. And I know when I first started networking and I started networking because I was feeling empty nest syndrome. The four children had left home. Mum had moved into aged care. There was just myself and my husband in the office because a lot of our staffing issued, I had already outsourced so that we could work from home to help with the, the kids and mum. Mm. And I felt, oh, I've got to get out and see new people. Steve had already always done networking. He didn't like it. He said it didn't work. I could see that it had worked because we'd got some good strategic alliances around our business that were giving us great referrals. So I thought, I'll go out and do it. But what I did was try to be like other people that had been doing it for years. I forgot about being me. Yeah. yeah. So what I think shy, that's the... What if you're shy in talking about yourself for? Oh, I was a wallflower for months and months and months. I just sat back and listened to others. I always saw the little shiny object on the other side of the room. So I would immediately buy from other people. I would immediately refer to other people, but never ask for anything back in return because I wasn't sure how to ask. Mm. And then I realized I didn't have to ask. If I became confident in telling people what I did through practice and trial and error, People would ask me, how could I help them? Yeah. So I think a lot of it is people go out and try and sell. Yeah. They go out and try and collect business cards and they think they're networking, but they're not. Yeah. It's like when you go to pick your kids up from school, you wave to the other mums that are in the car park or in the queue where you're standing to get them. 
but that's not connecting with them. You know their parents are someone. It's not until your child goes to their child's birthday party or something like that that you start to connect with them and you're just being yourself. And from there, it develops into a relationship. So I brought all those basic principles mm. into networking. Yeah. And found that's what worked for me. Now, for the majority of mums, that's easy way to start. And then from that, you can refine what you're good at. Some people are great at standing up and talking about themselves. Others don't want to, but they yeah. find what they're comfortable with. And then it goes from there. Yeah. I'm amazed that I do it. I'm amazed that I can stand up and talk in front of people mm. because I thought oh, I'm no good at that because I'd forgotten all about that from my corporate life when I was in the banking industry before children. I'd stopped all that and just focused on being a mum, but I hadn't realised that I was bringing a lot of those people skills into my role as a mum and juggling my work-life balance. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be as scary or daunting or feel like everybody's judging us or, you know, because we might have a new business or our business might not be successful yet or whatever it is. Um, I think a lot of people probably just are comparing themselves to others as well. Um, yeah, and I used to get a lot. A, a, a lot of times my husband used to say to me, Janet, we're not a big corporation. It's just us. And I'd say, yeah, but we don't have to think like that. Mm. We might be just us, but we're in a very personalised business. When we're talking insurance or investments with clients or loans with clients, it's very personal. We're mm. finding out a lot about them that they're not going to divulge to other people because we have to. So it's, it's not that we are just a mum and dad type business. You've got to mm. stop thinking. We've just got to think this is our business. Yeah. And people try and get out and they underestimate what value they can add to others because they're just a little fish in a big pond. So yeah. they underestimate what they can contribute to others. Yeah. And I think uh, uh, also taking the focus off themselves and am I good enough or am I successful enough or have I got something important to say and just focus on, well, what can I share um, that is going to be of value, even if it's just a, a, one little tip. You know, sometimes you might go to a networking event and you might have shared how you successfully got the kids off to school the, this morning, um, you know, with your routine that you do that might help another mum and it might not even be about your business, but it all Yeah, helps. exactly. It exactly. It doesn't have to be business, product or service related. Yeah. I still come back from every networking event or function that I go to and I've learnt something. Because I go with a plan in mind. Mm -hmm. Today, I either want to meet so many people, I want to do such and such. I have a plan, but I mm -hmm. always come back and do an audit of how the day went and what did I learn today. And when I yeah. break it down, I learnt something. Or it may be something you're reminded of, but you've mm -hmm. actually learnt something that you already knew that you had forgotten that you knew sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, And it could be anything how you organise your meal of a night so yeah. that you're not turning off from work and thinking, oh, no, now I'm straight into the kitchen. Just mm. something really little, oh, I could do that. Yeah. yeah. And things like that add to people's perception of you as a person and how organised you might be or mm. might not be and they might have a tip that they can help you with it. That's networking, yeah, balancing that's right. one another. That's right. I, I, mean, I learn from my kids now. The kids have grown up and they've got their own lives and they'll say something and it's like, wow, that's a mirror image of me. And then they might say something else and it's like, well, I like how you've done that. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. So it's not always people asking me how I can do something. Mm -hmm. I'm very open to learning from others and I would encourage everyone to always be learning. Don't mm -hmm. ever think you know it all. Yes, and just go with an open mind, like you said. Uh, go there with the, um, uh, go there thinking, I'm going to learn something today. What am I going to learn today? Instead yep. of thinking, yep. you know, yeah, putting judgments on yourself or worrying and stressing about what, yeah. what people are going to think of you. So yeah, and don't ever criticise yourself. What did I do wrong? It's not what you did wrong. It's what could I have done better? Just mm. reword. But you have to analyse once you go out and network. 
Yeah. If you get a referral when you go out and network, that's great. It's like, how come I got that? Analyze why you got it so it happens again. But if you come back without a referral, don't be disappointed. Don't just start spamming all the business card people that you got their card. Just think about, okay, you've got these cards. What can you do as your point of difference to contact those people? Were there any that you wanted to get in touch with? Don't get in touch with people just because you have to. You don't want to give that out. So, yeah, it's just being aware of what's around you and learning from yourself as well as from others because you learn things about yourself. That's basically personal development is learning about yourself. So just be open to that. Yeah. And I often, when I go to networking events, uh, I automatically get um, added to people's emails. Uh, yes. And it's like, where did that come from? And I, I might have not have even spoken to that person at the event. So, you know, is that etiquette, Janet, or how should we go about this in a better way? I personally, I don't think it's etiquette, but I would always ask permission but I wouldn't send them an email to ask permission. I either ask them at the event and have some sort of acknowledgement from them. I might ring them, I might text them. But having said that, when I get those emails that I haven't subscribed to, I don't automatically unsubscribe unless I particularly know that I've been spammed by that person before and that happens. Yeah. But I'll keep an eye because I never, I, I keep an open mind of what could come from that. Mm -hmm. But myself, I don't think it's etiquette. I think etiquette is just common manners. You, you don't go to somebody's house and just walk in without knocking on the door and being invited in. You don't go to someone's business and expect them to do business with you automatically. Mm -hmm. So an email is subscription is the same in my point of view. You ask permission, whether you get it on a subscription list, whether you ask them by message on Facebook, which is your confirmation because you've got it in messages. But no, I don't think it's etiquette because I'm pretty old fashioned with manners and I don't like being sold to or being pushed at. Mm -hmm. it, uh, um, it's funny you say that, Janet. Are manners old fashioned? I mean, it's funny you've said that. Like, well, I say they're, they're old fashioned, fashioned <laughs> but they're not old fashioned. Yeah. They should always be there. and. Lots of things have changed business-wise, technology-wise, process and systems-wise, mm. but basic manners haven't. Please, yeah. thank you, hasn't changed. Yeah. Maybe men opening doors for women may have changed, but in my point of view, no, it hasn't. Mm. A woman can open a, a door for a man. As that person acknowledges, thank you for that. Yeah. You're at yeah. a supermarket, you've got a shopping trolley full of stuff, the lady or the man behind you's got one or two items. Yeah. Let them go before you. Mm. It's not because you want them to think you're nice. It's like, what if it was you that had the two items? So yeah, I say they're old fashioned, but no, they're not. They're not really. Yeah, well, I guess we, we it's a, I guess it's just a term when you say good old fashioned manners or things yeah. like that. Yeah, it's probably a term I should change to just say, remember your manners. That's a bit nannerish in my point of view. Because <laughs> I could remember my, my nana saying, remember your manners. So I just say good old fashioned manners. Really, you know, the way I was brought up. Yeah, it's a different way of saying it. I say that because that's how I relate to it. Yeah, no, I think it's a good thing. And I think um, manners have got a lot to do with networking. You know, and there's, um, you know, it's something that we need to unfortunately remind people that, you know, there is a, a way to go about treating people and how we expect to be treated yeah. by people as well. I'm, you know. I constantly are reminded the first person I met at a networking event, my very first networking event, was a funeral director. And all I could think at the time was, oh my goodness. Trust me to sit near a funeral director, how, yes, I could get a referral for life insurance, but by the time they go to a funeral director, it's a bit late, isn't it? So I could see the funny side of it, <laughs> but I kept thinking she was, she was a lovely lady, had a great business, was a local business. It's like, just go with the flow and get to know this person. When I needed a funeral director, that was the person I went to. 
who looked after everything for me. So it was just don't ever underestimate who you meet and don't be yeah. rude to people. Mm. You know, I've been to events where they say, what do you do? I do such and such. Oh, no good to me and walk away. I've introduced other people to someone that I knew could be a good contact to them and they go, oh, yeah, I, I don't need any of that at the moment and walked off. It's like, no, you're not meeting people to buy from or sell to. Mm. Again, it's manners. Be polite. That's right. Don't and have that glazed over look. As we talked about before, you learn so much from others. So you might not need their products or service, but they've got expertise. They've got ways they do business. They've got yep. so so much experience, and and they are an asset. Just meeting them and and being a friend and a colleague. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so what, um, what are your businesses, Janet? Just tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, my history is a banking career where I was very people focused. I tried, did staff training and customer service training. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up in the Gold Coast head office where I was managing different branches of things. Mm -hmm. And with the bank, it's very similar to McDonald's. If you're going to open a bank account, would you like anything else with that? Mm -hmm. So I learned a broad range of being able to generate referrals from there. My second husband, Steve, was in the same industry. That's not how we met. So it was good that I could take the customer service and his personal insurance and financial planning expertise and bring them together. So that we started our own business, which is financial planning and your personal insurance. But me helping others added value to that mm -hmm. because I, could, I knew I was helping them if they had a backup plan. They had their business plans, but we could give them a backup plan if things went wrong, like income protection. So that's my core business. But from that, I, my role in the business, I wasn't the advisor. I had to generate customers. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a shop front. People don't just ring up looking for that type of insurance or those type of investments. Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I started networking. And it's from going out and networking, I realized if I was just me, I could add value to other businesses. By getting strategic alliances around me for our business, I could also benefit their business. So that's how networking with Janet came about. And that's my passion because that's yeah. what I like doing. And from that, with a networking colleague, I formed a magazine, which is about Biz Life Mag, because I was learning as I was out there networking mm -hmm. that you're working and you've got a family life and where's that balance? And I'm a different generation to my partner in the magazine, so we could give different viewpoints on that. Mm -hmm. So it's all a form of networking. So yep. yes, I've got different business names, mm -hmm. but I find that they all blend together because it's me. Yep. I'm putting my personal expertise into each one of those businesses, which is an extension of the other. Yeah. Excellent. Well, you've got many hats there, Janet, but you do it. All I do have many hats and family still comes first. Yeah. Whether it's my family, the client's family, the other business strategic alliance family. So it is a matter of juggling, but I think a lot of business owners that are self-employed, whether they're male or female, mm -hmm. have many hats. But usually yeah. the woman knows how to balance those hats and how to position them on the hat stand. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So just um, let me ask you, Janet, have you got any top tips for our mums, how that they can empower themselves? Yeah. 2016? My number different? one tip to everybody is just be yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Try, stay true to yourself, but remember you're not alone, whether it's in mum things, family things or business things. There's always someone else out there that can relate to what you're going through. Mm. If you get snowed under or if you get unorganized, ask for help. Mm. Don't be afraid, whether it's from family or friends or business colleagues, even if they're not in your industry, ask for help. Mm -hmm. By being yourself and admitting that you have flaws or you're struggling with someone, someone will help you. Yeah. And that will help you get organized. It'll give you time for you because you do need that. And your time for you doesn't mean you have to go to a day spa if you're not that sort of person. Mm. Some people, a time for them is to inundate themselves with more things to do work-wise, but that's time for them. That's what yeah. they thrive on. So it all comes back 
to always being yourself, being open to learning and asking for help. Because when you're networking, that's what you're doing. You're asking for help. This is me, get to know me. You can help me by helping me grow my business in whichever yeah. way, whether it's providing a service, providing a product or providing a, a client. Yeah. So just They're be great. yourself. Great tips. Thank you, Janet. And um, okay. just how do we get in contact with you if we need any um, personal insurance or business insurance or any tips for networking or we want to be part of your online magazine? I am on my mobile all the time. That's my preferred method of contact, whether it's a text or a call. Yep. And that's 0418 781 657. Mm -hmm. If you ring the office number, nine times out of 10, you'll get me, but um, mobile number, you'll always get me. You'll always get my message bank. And I always check my messages and my texts. Yep. I am on Facebook for networking with Janet and that's just Janet Culpert, all one word. Arrow Focus on Wealth is on Facebook, just as Focus on Wealth. And Biz Life Mag is on Facebook, Biz Life Mag AU. Yep. But the best method of contact is my mobile number. Yeah. And I'm more than open. The old fashioned way, it. give us a call. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Just the old fashioned way, give me a call. And I, I do like being old fashioned. Here's my handset <laughs> that plugs into my phone. So. Okay. When that's in the top of my handbag, people know that I'm contactable. I get <laughs> laughed at about it, but I love it. Oh, and it just awesome. reminds me that I'm there to connect with other people. Yes, yes. And your networking is on the Gold Coast, is that right, Janet? Basically, yes. Yeah. yeah. I like to, um, I can do, I've got a lot of contacts interstate mm -hmm. and that will just be a, a trip away and we incorporate that with different families or I can talk to them online, such as we're doing now. Yeah. But any live events are basically on the Gold Coast. Yeah. Okay. Because well, thank, that's you so for, thank you for joining us today, Janet, and thank you for your fantastic tips about networking. Thanks, and, Mel. Um, and how to empower yourself for a fantastic 2016. And I want to wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And for those of you that are watching, uh, Janet has an um, article in Mums in Business magazine coming up very, very soon about juggling uh, all the things of being a mum and a grandma and juggling all the hats that we do in business. So look out for that too. Yeah, thanks, Mel. And I'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a great 2016. A new year is always a great chance to do something else. Yes, absolutely. And all uh, mums should be so proud of being a mum. Absolutely. And then, and just, you know, just being a mum is, is an outstanding achievement. So being a mum. It business, certainly is. It certainly is. <laughs> being a mum in business, I think is amazing. Very empowering to, you know, trust yourself, to back yourself, to um, go and ask for help and surround yourself with like-minded, positive people who are going to lift you up and, and support you on your journey. So you're doing a great job, Janet, supporting all the local women in business and men too that you have along to your networking events and um, and keep up the great work. Thank you. Thanks, Mel. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye for now. Bye.